Hello and welcome to our New Year's story time. My name is Julie Dries. I'm the children's librarian at the Harrison Township Public Library. Today we're going to do a story about New Year's Day. And sometimes when we read stories, we read stories that are what we call fiction, which means the author makes up the story in their imagination. Other times when we do stories, we're reading something called nonfiction. And that's when we have real true information. And that's what our story is today, nonfiction. We are going to find out about how people around the world celebrate New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And maybe you can think about how your family celebrates New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. How did you do it in the past? How are you gonna do it this year? Let's see how people around the world celebrate New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Here is our story. The title is New Year's Day. And parents, this is an ebook. I am actually reading this off my computer screen. If you're interested in reading ebooks with your kids, um, this is from the Michigan E Library, and you can connect to them from our website, htlibrary.org. Just go to the children's page and you'll see Michigan E Library. This is from the Michigan eBooks K through 8 collection. And the title is New Year's Day. It's by Crabtree Publishing Company. And our author is Lynn Peppas. You can see here we have a table of contents, which tells us all the things that we are going to find in this book. And we're going to jump in right away to our first section, which is, what is New Year's Day? What is New Year's Day? New Year's Day is a holiday that almost everybody celebrates. It falls on the first day of a brand new year. Most people celebrate it on January 1st. Midnight is the start of New Year's Day. People of some cultures go by different calendars and celebrate New Year's Day on a different date. New Year's Day is a public holiday. Most people do not go to work or school. Many people, many plan parties or dinner with family and friends. Friends like to get together for parties on New Year's Day. Did you know New Year's Day starts at midnight or 12 o'clock a.m. and lasts until midnight that day. New Year's Eve. People start to celebrate New Year's Day the night before. Cities around the world have special New Year's Eve celebrations. Many have concerts that lead up to midnight. Some cities hold outdoor New Year's parties. Did you know? Many people stay awake until midnight to welcome the new year in as soon as it begins. Have you ever stayed up that late? People have a good time while they wait for the new year to come. When it is 10 seconds before midnight, people start counting down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. When midnight comes, they shout, Happy New Year! People kiss and hug at New Year's. And you can see in the picture here, our caption below it says, At midnight, people wish each other a Happy New Year. An old holiday. People have been celebrating a new year for over 5,000 years. Long ago, there were no calendars. People relied on nature to tell when it was the end of a year. And our picture caption here says, Long ago, Romans believed that their god Janus could look backward and forward. So you see, look at their coin that they have here. You can see him looking backward and forward. Kind of cool. Some people believe that New Year came in the spring. Others thought, the end of the year was in the fall. Ancient Romans began their new year on January 1st over 2,000 years ago. And this is what we saw in the picture on the last page. Their god Janus had two faces. People believed that he looked back on the old year and forward to the new one. And this picture here is of ancient Roman leader Julius Caesar 
He was the first person to make New Year's Day on January 1st. Did you know? Roman leader Julius Caesar called the month January after Janus, the two-faced god. So that guy on the coin that we saw the picture of on the last page, that's what January is named after. Interesting fact. Oh, I bet you guys like these. This page is about fireworks. Many cultures celebrate New Year's Day with fireworks. Fireworks were first made in China about 1,000 years ago. People believe fireworks scared away bad luck with the loud noises they made. Fireworks are a good way to welcome in the new year. Did you know the New Year's Day firework display held in Madeira, Portugal in 2006 was the largest one ever. More than 60,000 fireworks were lit. It's a lot of fireworks, isn't it? People used them to ring in the new year, so they would have good luck only. Large cities such as Niagara Falls, Canada, hold fireworks displays at midnight on New Year's Eve. Fireworks have different patterns and colors. Some look like colored flowers or spiders in the air. And in this picture, these men are making fireworks. This is what they look like before we see them up in the sky. They're in these little containers like this. This page is about resolutions. Have you guys ever heard of resolutions? Maybe some of you have done this before. On New Year's Day, many people think about the past year. Some people want to make the coming year even better. Many people make resolutions on New Year's Day. A resolution is a promise you make to yourself to change something in your life. These people in the picture are working on a resolution to get in shape. So you can see they're jogging together to get in shape. Young people might make resolutions to try harder at school or be nicer to their families, pets, or friends. Some try to keep their rooms clean. Another resolution might be to use less energy and help the earth. People write down their resolutions or people write down their list of resolutions so they do not forget them. And that's what this guy's doing here. Did you know one popular resolution that many people, both young and old, make is to get fit in the new year? So exercise is a very popular New Year's resolution. <gasps> new Year's foods. Some people around the world think that what you eat on New Year's can bring you good luck in the year to come. Cabbage is believed to make you richer. Some people think that cabbage leaves look like paper money. And this picture here, we can see in the caption down here, it says, pork sausages and sauerkraut, which is pickled cabbage, are lucky foods to eat at New Year's. Pork is lucky too, and, it, and many eat it with their cabbage to give them extra luck. What about a lucky dessert? Try rice pudding with an almond in it. People from Norway eat this at New Year's. And our caption here says, these black-eyed peas will soon be cooked and eaten. Did you know? Some people in the United States eat black-eyed peas on New Year's Day. They believe it will bring them good luck in the new year. So there's lots of ideas about what kinds of food might bring you good luck in the new year, isn't there? Parades. Parades on New Year's Day are held around the world. In the U.S., there are some famous ones. In Philadelphia, there's the New Year's Day Mummers Parade. Mummers are actors. And you can see a picture of them here. And the caption says, Mummers are costumed actors who welcome in the New Year. Did you know? The Rose Bowl is a college football game first played at the New Year's Parade in 1902. This game is called the Granddaddy of Them All. New Year's clubs plan for all year for the parade. This tradition began over 100 years ago. The Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California is over 100 years old. It is held each year on New Year's Day. 
floats with flowers parade down the streets. Millions of people watch the parade on television. You can see the beautiful example of a float here from the Rose Parade. Floats are decorated with flowers for the annual Tournament of Roses Parade. That's a really fun one to watch. Chinese New Year. The Chinese New Year celebration falls on different dates between January 21st and February 20th. Many Chinese people celebrate in their homeland of China. Other Chinese communities celebrate it where they live. It lasts for 15 days, but most people celebrate for two days. Our picture caption says, good luck and money come in red envelopes during the Chinese New Year. Did you know some children get red envelopes with money gifts inside for Chinese New Year's? This gift brings good luck for the person who gets it. So we have another good luck tradition there. In Vancouver, Canada, everybody loves to watch the annual Chinese New Year Parade. People enjoy the lion dance teams. A group of people make a long cloth lion. Dancers make the lion move underneath the cloth by moving poles. The lion is thought to scare away any bad luck in the new year. And you can see, look at all these lion heads here. The caption says, People underneath the lion and dragon puppets make them come to life in Chinese New Year parades. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah marks the beginning of a new year for Jewish people. It falls on different dates every year between September 5th and October 5th. Rosh Hashanah begins at sunset. And you can see in this picture here, a shofar is blown during synagogue services at Rosh Hashanah. Did you know at Rosh Hashanah, people blow a horn called a shofar? These horns are made from animal horns, such as a male sheep called a ram. On Rosh Hashanah, many people go to a synagogue. It is a holy place to worship God. They ask God to forgive anything wrong they might have done in the past year. People eat apples dipped in honey on Rosh Hashanah. They believe that eating this will bring a sweet new year. And our picture caption here says, apples dipped in honey will bring sweetness in the new year. And that's what he's doing there. New Year's music. The, popular, the most popular song to ring in a new year is Auld Lang Syne. The words are from a poem written in 1788 by Scottish poet, Robert Burns. The words were set to an old folk song. And this picture is of a famous Canadian band leader, Guy Lombardo. He made Auld Lang Syne a popular song for the New Year's. Did you know the rock band U2 wrote a popular song called New Year's Day? It became a hit single in 1983. People still listen to it around the world today. A Canadian musician named Guy Lombardo used the song Auld Lang Syne for New Year's in 1929. Today it is used in celebrations throughout North America and Europe. And here is the other song we were talking about. This is Bono from the band U2, sings the popular song New Year's Day at concerts all year round. Here's some other New Year's customs. Many people believe that what you do on New Year's Day will be carried on for the rest of the year. This is why they follow a custom of spending time with people they like. And here we can see a family. It says, sharing a tasty meal with the people you like best is a good way to start off a new, the, a new year. Many people think that the first person to visit a house on New Year's Day will bring luck into the house. A young man brings the best luck. This person is called a first footer or the first one to put foot in, to put a foot in the house. And you can see here he's stepping through the door and some people think it is lucky to have a young man step inside your house first at New Year's. Did you know? Some people believe that wearing new clothing and shoes on New Year's Day will bring them riches. New Year's symbols. A baby is a symbol for the new year. Babies stand for a new beginning. Sometimes a baby wears a top hat and a banner with the new year on it. 
many places in North America, give special gifts to the firstborn baby in the new year. And this is a baby new year, it says in the caption, baby new year grows up to become an old man named Father Time. He passes his duties on to the next baby new year. An old man named Father Time is a symbol of the year that has passed. He carries an hourglass to help him mark time. He sometimes wears a banner with the old year on it. And in the picture here, the caption says, Father Time shows the old year has passed. A baby stands for the new year. Did you know? Fireworks, party horns, church bells, and banging pots and pans are some of the noisier symbols used at New Year's. What do you use to make noise during the New Year? New Year's at Times Square. For over 100 years, Times Square in New York City, U.S. has been a favorite place to be on New Year's Eve. Here, one million people wait for the New Year to come. Our picture caption says you can watch the New Year's celebration at Times Square on TV or you can visit in person. Have you ever watched this on TV? Did you know the Times Square ball is made of glass and electric lights? It weighs over 11,000 pounds, which is 5,000 kilograms, and is 12 feet or 3.7 meters from one side to another. Pretty big, huh? Many more people from around the world watch this event on TV. You can see the ball here. At one minute before midnight, a giant sparkling New Year's Eve ball slowly makes its way down 77 feet, or 23 meters, on special cables in just one minute. When it gets to the bottom, it is the new year. In our picture caption, we can see the ball in good detail here. And the Times Square ball slowly makes its way down to welcome in the new year. So that's kind of a, a cool close-up picture of it. New Year's around the world. In India, some Hindu people celebrate New Year's in the spring. People wear yellow clothes and decorate their houses with flowers. Others, ce others celebrate it in the fall during another festival called Diwali. In every different language, people wish each other a happy new year. And our picture shows during Diwali, families honor their beliefs by praying. That's what this family's doing. Many people of different cultures like to clean houses before the new year comes so that everything will stay in order for the year ahead. You should not clean on New Year's Day though because you might sweep away your good luck. <laughs> These brave people take a dip in icy water on New Year's Day in the picture. Grrr. Did you know some groups of people jump in icy waters on New Year's Day? These cold dips are thought to keep their minds clear throughout the new year. Would you ever do that? Go into really, really cold icy water? I don't know if I could do that. And that is the end of our book. So you got to see how different people celebrate New Year's, maybe make some connections about how your family celebrates New Year. And at the end of informational books, sometimes we have cool things here called a glossary. So if there were some words in this story that we didn't know, it's like a little mini dictionary. And it tells us the definition or what these different words mean. So that's pretty cool. And also there's something back here called an index where different things that it talks about in the book, we can see what pages those are on if we wanted to look at that. So that was our story about New Year's Day. Thank you so much for joining me today and I wish you and your family a very, very happy New Year.